How you doing? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today I'm going to talk about um, can I quit drinking alcohol without any help? Uh, you know, this is a, a sort of a topic that comes up every so often with people. And people, I think they conflate the idea of stopping drinking alcohol and um, what they're going to do afterwards. Um, you have to look at this stopping drinking alcohol for what it really is. It's not putting the alcohol into your mouth. And anybody can do that. Um, you know, it depends what you mean, of course, by uh, can I do it without help? And it depends what type of help. I think you're better off getting help. You're better off having support. You're better off having people around you that are on your side and um, have got you back sort of thing. Um, you know, because there's so many other... There's so many... Uh, so many areas where you can be tempted to go back into your old way of thinking and there's so many different ways of thinking that you have to change for yourself you know it's not just about um it's not just about stopping the drinking alcohol it's making sure that you don't go back to that life that's the main thing you know because if you stop drinking alcohol for a month two months or three months um you know it's 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 easy to to get into the momentum of things when you're in that pain you know, we always say that people don't moderate alcohol, people moderate pain. People don't stop drinking alcohol, they stop doing something because it's causing them pain. Uh, you know, I drank for over 30 years and I wouldn't have drank for over 30 years if it wasn't giving me something, right? That something was a really, really poor version of what I thought um, life was about. You know, having fun, what I thought fun was about, what I thought socializing was about, but I didn't know any different. And that's the problem. Um, most people won't stop doing something like that until it causes them more grief on the other side of things than, um, than they're getting from the, uh, or uh, yeah, more grief from, from drinking alcohol, for instance, than stopping drinking alcohol. So they're getting a lot of pain because of the alcohol that they're drinking so that they stop then. So um, when you go into a dry out clinic, when you go into a, a AA, when you come to us, right, there is absolutely nothing that I can do to help you to stop drinking if you keep putting it into your mouth. You know, regardless of where you go, you know, you can get yourself put into one of these expensive um, clinics where they will... You know, there's no alcohol. They've got uh, a medical staff to help you. They've, they've got uh, nutrition to help you. They've got all these things to help you. But once you come back out of that and you go back into your own life, that's when the problems start. I mean, like like I said, for me, when you pass that first threshold and you say to yourself, right, well, I'm stopping drinking alcohol now, there is a pain level that is pushing you to, to stop. But once that pain starts to diminish and diminishes enough, that's when you've got the problems, right? That's when your old life can start to sneak back in again. You know, that's why we're, you know, my whole goal for Habits V2 is to get people to a year without drinking alcohol, step by step, step by slow, step by slow step. And it's changing the way that you think about alcohol, changing the way, that's a f the first person that we do, but changing the way that you think about yourself, changing the way that you think about your life. Like I said, um, look at the place that I'm sitting. You know, this is um, the fruits of me stopping drinking alcohol. I would not have been here if I had carried on drinking. I would still probably be in um, Ireland somewhere. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with Ireland. But what we've got here is we're going to stay here for six months of the year in the summertime, um, spring and summer, and then go back to Spain in the wintertime to have that mild um, Mediterranean weather and then spend maybe uh, hopefully a month or six weeks in Ireland. Like I said, I couldn't have done that without alcohol. I couldn't have done that without changing my, my viewpoint about alcohol. You know, we've... I'm living in a country here where it's so cheap. It's four percent taxation on um, VAT, value-added tax. So you you can buy a box of ten, a packet of two hundred cigarettes here for less than thirty euros. Less than thirty euros. You can buy alcohol is so cheap here, uh, un unbelievably cheap. 
in comparison to where I was in Ireland, even in comparison to Spain where it's very cheap. But um, if I hadn't have stopped, I mean, now it's like I walk into any shop and I don't see it anymore, you know, it's, it's you see it, but it's something like, um, it's like walking down the, the, the kiddies aisle for me, you know, where the, the nappies are and the, the bottles. It's something that, yeah, I used to do that, but I don't do it anymore. And it's something that I, you know, I understand it's there, but it doesn't, it doesn't, um, doesn't get into my head. At the end of the day, nobody can teach you that simple rule. If you want to stop drinking alcohol, don't put the stuff into your mouth.